I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Oops, the podcast is coming to you live from my apartment. I'm here with Giulio Gallarotti. Oh, yeah. Nothing different about today's episode in terms of uh, where we're recording from, but I just thought it might be fun. It is different. It literally is different in terms of where we are recording from. We literally recorded in a different room last time. You know what? (laughs) It's the only time where that has been true. You know what? You're right. (laughs) Yeah, we we did record in a different spot, but we are back to our, our stomping grounds, our home court here in the stewed. The stew. Uh, and excited to, to, man, life is picking up speed. Life's picking up. I got a lot going on. A lot of irons in the fire, a lot of balls in the air. Yeah, it feels, I don't want to, you know, prematurely say it, but it does feel like we're back to sort of the old, the way things used to be in a way, you know? What do you mean? Like, like. Oh, with COVID? I mean, dude, even I was like looking, people are posting the comedy shows they're on. The amount of comedy shows that exist again are just like insane yeah. there's just so much comedy again yep. uh and yeah i don't know the streets have been filled with people streets are filled restaurant reservations hard to come by life finds a way sure does so now uh i was a little late to get here you guys have been waiting for me and i apologize for that i had a dentist appointment and boy I feel like dentist appointments are the... Th- we, we've talked about dentist appointments before, I yeah, know. Yeah, it's been a bit. But I realized that there is never a good time in your life for a dentist appointment. No one has ever looked at a week they had coming up with very little going on and said, boy, I've got a pretty free week. I should schedule a dentist appointment. <laughs> your dentist appointment sneaks up on you and just punches you in the face every single time you, you have You go one. every six months? I do. And did you have any cavities? No. Have, when's the last time you've even had one, if ever? I've never. Wow. That's no really fillings, weird. no root canals, no crowns, none of that stuff. That's great. In fact, the, the woman was extremely complimentary about my mouth to the degree that I almost, I almost thought she was, you know, a little too much. <laughs> she was coming on a little strong, but she was mm-hmm. gentle with her, mm-hmm. with the hook. Oh, the dude. Hook tool. Oh, my God. Don't even. And so I'm actually going to request her because sometimes there are there are some people there who excavate your mouth. Do when they press on the top of your teeth with it? Well, I've got this, Julio. I've got this gum recession. Oh, I have some too. Because I brushed too violently That's what for said years. To me as well, is it the top right corner? Both of the backs. Mm, I have and some so down here too. Yeah, when they go in there and start fooling around, it, my, the nerves are exposed, and yeah, it's it hurts extremely like a sensitive. You feel like this discomfort in your spine, your lower spine. I don't know, whatever it is, it's not good. Um, but you know, uh, they have some cool teeth whitening options. Considering a, I've a heard more... that hurts too. Is that true? From what I've heard. Okay. Stresses me out, dude. Teeth are stressful. So it's funny. I'm, I used to have teeth shattering dreams, and they say that I've that, that many that's times. because of money st- troubles. God. And I'll be honest, the only times I've ever had them, which, by the way, was most of my life, was <laughs> like times where I was like super stressed about money, and I would have like dreams that my teeth had shattered. What a strange. That feels like a, a very sinophile theme <laughs> to bring that back. Do you know what I mean? It seems like that, something that. Like an anime thing? Chinese culture would have drawn that connection. Oh, interesting. Of between interesting. a dream and your income. Interesting. I don't know why. And if that's racist, you know what? I'm sorry. I don't think it is. I, I don't think so. It's, it should be a, a compliment. But. Dude, one time a guy was telling me about how like you can go to Chinatown to buy these sort of like Eastern medicine things. And he was telling me how like for his erectile dysfunction, he had created this cocktail of like <laughs> a, a deer paw. <laughs> and like three or four other things i was like what the fuck yeah. are you talking powdered about? powdered stuff they powder yeah, all that crazy. up crazy i'm like that's wild yeah. man yeah um do you remember in the show the night of or in the night before the night that, of the one with what's his name riz ahmed yes night of 
What an amazing. Wasn't that called the night yeah. of? Yeah, it was good. Spectacular. I thought it lost steam in the second half. To well, you would say that. The beginning was very good. Yeah, no, it, 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 I, I do agree. <laughs> I think the, the, the penultimate episode and maybe the one before that were a little lagging, but then the season finale brought it all back with the courtroom scene. Mm. And it was the guy who representing him was the lawyer who had the very bad uh, skin irritation. Oh, yeah. And he went to an Eastern medicine place and started taking powders and it cleared it up and he thought he was fixed and then it sure enough came back right as he was about to take the stand to defend uh his client anyway um dude have you ever done acupuncture no needles yeah. give me the willies yeah to be honest it, it, i always kind of found it painful i think there's two different style needles the japanese ones are thin are more thin mm. Uh, but the place that I had gone to was, had Chinese ones, which are thicker and mm-hmm. it's very painful. Interesting. Back well, to teeth. I, I wanted to say this. I was coming home. I was coming home and I was late and I you know, was taking the subway and I had to change from the six train to the F mm. at Broadway Lafayette. Yes. And I was taking the stairs down to the F train. I did the same thing. And I was on my phone, looking at my phone kind of. And luckily, I stopped um, right above at the top of the stairs down to the final one and finished what I was doing on my phone and then took my eyes away from my phone and realized that there was defecate all over the top three steps. No. And immediately I thought, oh, that's dog poop. Who brought a dog (laughs) onto the subway, (laughs) you know, and didn't clean it up? What kind of asshole? Brings a dog onto the subway and doesn't clean it up. And then I thought, what kind of dog shits on steps? Right. There's no way that a dog shits on steps. At which point the light bulb went off and I, and I thought, ah, it's a human. It's a human shit. <laughs> and they used the stairs as their toilet Dude. to create a ledge, you know? It's and insane. then I had the thought of like, good for that guy <laughs> you know he, that least, guy at, does not care at least he used the stairs <laughs> at least he used the stairs instead of squatting like an animal oh my god nobody has that sort of quad strength anymore because it's terrible you ever try to just sit in a squat it's, it's not, not comfortable not easy he, he used the stairs as a toilet and then as i was looking and all of this was going on in my head a woman came from behind me and she wasn't paying attention. And I went, oh, watch yourself there. And she goes, thank you. <laughs> and it was like, oh, thank you, fellow New Yorker, for pointing out the human shit that I nearly stepped in, which would have thrown quite a wrench in my good mood. <laughs> Dude, there was, it was beyond belief. I mean, this is, <laughs> I know it's not new to tell these stories about New York, but you don't see it that often. You don't. And then when you do, you just think... What am I doing living here? Like, why do I not live in the country where, where people will, at, at worst, shit in the woods mm. and you don't have to see it so much? Dude, it's a fair point. It's just not good. Who cleans that up? Is it a good Samaritan? No, I think like the people who work at the subway. Bro. It must be. It has to be. Um, and I always wonder, so first of all, if Hillary, if we encounter something like that on the sidewalk, Hillary will call it, she calls it bad boy. She, <laughs> oh, that's right. She goes, look out for the bad boy. Oh, oh. But usually she's talking about dog poop, right? It can be, it can come from a human or an animal. I always find it interesting. Why is it so much more disgusting from a human than from an animal? In theory, it should be more disgusting from a hu- or from an animal. Is um, it, no, maybe not. Is it because... Animals customarily do that, and humans do not. Which I think makes it's it more because alarming. yeah, I think it's because animals never shit in a toilet with a closed, locked door. <laughs> right, right. You never right. knock on a door and hear woof. Yeah, <laughs> Barney's in there. You know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'll try again in a few minutes. Sorry, Kojai. Yeah, you take your time, buddy. For a human being <laughs> to shit in in anywhere other than a toilet, something's wrong. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's, it's either good. an emergency and they didn't make it to the toilet or their life has really lost structure to the degree that they can just shit on the stairs 
of a public transit terminal with no regard for human life. I mean, <laughs> dude, so the, <sighs> the, I forget who told me this. Maybe one of my, my maybe my dad told me this story. When he was a kid, he was with one of his friends and his friend's mom was driving. They're driving on like the BQE or something like one of the most like busiest fucking streets in New York City or in general, like a busy street. And his mom just like really had to go to the bathroom like that. Mm. And she's like, I got to go to the bathroom. And the kid was like, mom, no, mom, no. (laughs) And they pull over on the side of the highway and the mom and the kids just going, mom. No! <laughs> As the mom proceeds, just let her rip on the side of the fucking highway, dude. I'm like, that is insane. Have you ever had? No, not like that. In your life, have you ever had like a, I don't, I, I, it's not even up to me. I don't care if people can see this. I have no choice. Mm, no, nah, not that I can think of. Really? Yeah. And if yeah. I have, I like probably, I, I probably not even acknowledging i think i've had at one time i was in uh i think eighth grade we were driving up to a ski mountain my mom was driving we had a big van full of my friends well four of us rented a condo and i had had diarrhea for a day or two so it was a risk (laughs) getting in the car and we i had to go and I told my mom, and she didn't, you know, for some reason, I think the weather was bad. We didn't want to stop. And everyone was like, really? Come on, we're almost there. And I said, okay, I think I can hold it. And then 20 minutes later, <laughs> my body just won. Mm. You know, it won the argument. Mm-hmm. And I said, mom, you got to pull over. It's, it's happening. <laughs> and I, I, I had to jump out of the car and... and running through a like a snowbank i mean it was it was, it was feet <laughs> of snow that's probably convenient in this well situation. i mean you don't you know it's like you don't Dig even realize hole. what the elements are at that point right and i had to just squat in a snowbank and my friends were howling laughing you know threw my pants away i mean it's, it's just, a good thing it was before cell phones i'm assuming or yeah before kids had them at least exactly so otherwise you were done dude totally <laughs> <laughs> so okay on awesome. from that um well dude so the ping pong match has happened yes we're not going to spoil what happened yet because the video will be out this week but before the next episode it's gonna be either today or tomorrow we are figuring out how that's gonna work still but keep your eyes peeled we'll post when it is up and i promise you it is worth watching it was exciting listen to, say to me the least. listen to me I am not overselling this when I say that that was one of the most exciting things that I've ever seen in my whole life. <laughs> I cannot explain he means it. He means it. how much better this went than I thought it was going to go. <laughs> not that I had low expectations. No, no, no. It just... I don't know. I don't want to say much other than I wouldn't sell this hard except nobody who sees the if you'd been there, if you watched the video, you're not going I mean it's it's spellbinding the way that this <laughs> happened. <laughs> it Jaw was on the floor. Really awesome and not to mention like the entire squad in the mix like Ryan and Francis doing the commentary which I just watched some of it. It was hilarious. Chris shooting it and like it's as if they hired fucking Darren Aronofsky to shoot it like yeah. just like really artistically shot yes yeah, like Levinson. different angles Sam Levinson over there yeah. young Sam Levinson yeah, seriously yeah. young Sam Levinson the new Darren Aronofsky um good and and you know for a Sunday afternoon event which you know Sundays are not a great day to have to like do something like that in theory but it, it really was a lot of fun and it the and the match itself too was unbelievably exciting big shout out to Brian. Brian was a great guy. Brian Levy, I think. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, great guy. Uh, very good ping pong player and a very exciting uh, match. So we're excited for you yeah. guys to check that out. Cool. And we'll, we'll, get, all, we'll get into it. On yeah, the, on keep the an eye episode. out for that. We'll be posting about it. Um, Julio, I, I had something I, you know, we were laughing about earlier, which was when I walked in, you told me that someone had said something about me oh, and yeah. you prefaced it almost by letting me know that I was about to get offended. 
No, no. I just like, I didn't think that. I thought that you maybe had just heard it so many times that it wouldn't be as funny. Oh, no. I wasn't sure how funny you would think it was. Okay, well, then I misunderstood your 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 preface. Because you've said this about yourself, so I didn't think I was going to insult I you. I get accused a lot of speaking very slowly on the podcast, to which I say, I'll try to spend a full episode one time soon speaking at a much faster pace, and then <laughs> you guys can decide what you like better. And I can tell you right now, you're going to wish that I had slowed back down because <laughs> nobody wants to hear coked up Francis speech. <laughs> but all of this is to say uh, that when you told me what he had said, I thought it was hysterical and I started laughing. Yeah. <laughs> and I was in a circle of people not too long ago that I, I know pretty well, but not that well. And someone, we were all kind of, whatever, j joking around. And then someone said something at me that was mean. Oh, wow. But but kind of funny. He basically called me a huge bitch or something. I think that's what he said. <laughs> what? Why? Well, because, all right. I mean, I can say it. Dude, it you're it's, a bitch. It's my, it's my buddies from Bird Dogs. They came to one of my show. Shout out, Bird Dogs. And a bunch of young guys, and I have had played basketball with them, mm -hmm. which you uh, know, yeah. and I had hurt my fingers. Okay. And they said, when are you going to come back and play basketball with us? And I said, I need more time. My fingers are still in pain. This finger injury was terrible. And they're, you know, everyone's making jokes about, right. oh, it's your finger. You know, right. nobody takes a finger injury, ser injury seriously. And so he was like, yeah, well, we'll be ha glad to have you back when you decide you don't want to be a huge bitch anymore. <laughs> Something <laughs> like fair, that. That's fair. That's and fine. instantly I started laughing. Yeah. And if you can summon the courage to laugh hard when someone says something to you, because in the past, I didn't deal that well with humiliation, mm -hmm. especially in public settings. I, my face turns red. I blush easily. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel hurt. And then my response oftentimes is to come back at that person. I can't let them have the last shot right right you know i feel defensive i mean in my life that's that's i've never i haven't had the thickest skin mm -hmm. and yet lately i've found it easier to either ignore it which is one option but if you laugh when someone says something mean to you people like that about you mm -hmm. do you know what i mean yeah no i do I it do. means that you can take a joke mm -hmm. and this should seem obvious no it doesn't There's, but it's, it's not something that i was able to do until my i was 32 years old it's very nuanced though because it's like okay people pick on you people have picked on you so naturally you probably like it less than the average person and a lot of the time it's like people trying to knock you down a peg you didn't do anything you just show except show up and they're like oh this guy is whatever they have decided that you possess that they don't possess they're now like i gotta knock this guy down a peg so now you're just walking into that. For all they know, like they don't know what you're dealing with. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, so but you, what, what you're describing could could be worse than what I'm saying. 100%. So, but, but I'm saying, like, this is how we've gotten where we are. To this point where if someone were to call you a bitch for jamming your finger, which isn't that bad of an insult. No, it's not to bad be honest, at all. But you have a, a, a like lower tolerance for this because of the years of people giving you a hard time. Yeah. Perhaps. I don't know. Am I no, right that's probably true. That's There's probably something true. there, at least. And people often assume that if you've spent a long time receiving uh, the slings and arrows of of people who who would take you down a peg, that somehow that toughens your skin. But I disagree. I think your point is is totally spot on. Which it makes you angrier. Yeah, and yeah. makes you less. You don't. You have less of a bandwidth to to take shit. Mm -hmm. uh, and finally, you just snap. And then people see a snap and they think you're a psychopath. Totally. Um, so to that point, I like there are things where if people were to pick on me about them, it would make me sensitive and I would not like it. And I would feel bad about myself. I wouldn't take it well. And I might not like depending on who was saying it. That is an important piece to this. Who is saying it? Why are they saying it? Mm -hmm. So it's like if you're just fucking around, you're giving somebody a hard time. They give you a hard time. All good. But there's certain people, then, then you're like, mm, you shouldn't be picking on me. 
like you're kind of like you know what i mean and then it's like oh like what is this like what is this aggression like i don't like this at all yeah you know what i mean well i think i think part of the problem for you and and maybe both of us is that you exist at a natural state of happiness mm. your resting state is is a happy one i think that's probably true and that's a wonderful quality because some people do not rest that's true at happiness they rest in in bitterness or they're, mm. they're starting below you know in anger and and you to be if you're thrown off from that or if, if someone does throw that off you off from that it's it's a bummer like why come at somebody who's just naturally happy and willing to be happy it's i hate people who do that it's annoying um but some you know i guess some people just want to want to rise out of people or they want to be validated and get attention themselves by having you react to them and um i don't know man i i i really think that laughing when people say something mean to you or are trying to make a joke at your expense even if you're seething inside even if you're roiling with rage if you can find a way to fake it on your face and laugh, you win. Yeah, I you guess, win. I guess it's you cer- really it's certainly win. a technique. Yeah. It's hard though, and it just depends. Like I, I don't know that I always would feel because because sometimes I feel like people expect me to do that. Yeah, you know, and so it's like I almost I almost wonder. To, to a degree, I sometimes would be able to take it as I'm being taken advantage of, where it's like, oh, they just think they can say whatever they want to me, and they because they know I'm just gonna laugh at it or something. You know, what I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like maybe that's just maybe that's not correct. I mean, I, I that approach for me personally does that I, bother I you more than the people saying the thing? It just it, it just really depends what they're saying. Like the the basketball thing, I I would have no problem with that. Yeah. But if somebody started like picking on me for about things that I'm insecure about or just like being mean, like comedians can be mean and then like, oh, what? Like, like that whole, oh, I'm just kidding. That thing can be like more extreme with comedians. Mm. So I try not to do it so that I don't get it back because if you do it, you have to expect to get it back. Right. I know a lot of comedians who do it and then hate it when they get it back, which of is what a terrible personality trait that is. Well, we're yeah, surrounded just, by that. Yeah, man. you're a hypocrite. <laughs> we're yeah. surrounded by that. I know plenty of people who can't take <laughs> any kind of and then don't understand why people responded the way they did when they took the first shots totally totally and yeah i mean it's total hypocrisy but dude for i i I agree that i think especially maybe for you and from for many perhaps that seems like it is a really strong play and to be honest you also like diffuse a and granted this maybe the the basketball thing is not an example of this but you sort of diffuse the situation that was never there to begin with. You sure do. And then they've just immediately, then they, if anything, they feel bad and they're now just so nice to you for the rest of the night. It's that because, you know, you wonder, well, if I were to laugh at this guy making a joke at my expense, am I encouraging him to keep doing that? And the answer is no. Right. Because people don't make fun of you when you take it well. Totally. They're like, oh, this guy's cool. Like, <laughs> Why did I do yeah, that? Like you know, I that's mean, funny. It's it, laughing is this is 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 the best in my opinion. What's what's also good and achieves the same result is if someone took a shot at you, like in a group of people chilling around, and you were like, "Yeah, I get it." You know, you, you just like agreed. <laughs> you just concede. Like, life's been yeah, hard. Life's you know, been hard for me. You're not wrong. I mean, I know. Well, I'm I'm working on it. One time. God, I, it's so strange. I, I have vivid memories of moments in my life where I was a victim of bullying. Mm. I think a lot of people do. Um, and I still remember to this day when I was, I, I walked onto the soccer team at, at school and college. Have I told you that? No. I played soccer for Didn't know that. one year. <laughs> Had no idea. That's insane. Um, well, I quit the lacrosse team two thirds of the way through my sophomore year and then walked onto the soccer team. And then did you go back? To I had lacrosse? made the soccer team my freshman year and I wanted to play both sports, but the lacrosse coach wouldn't let me the new lacrosse coach who's now the head coach at Maryland. 
interesting. Uh, because he had come in from the Naval Academy and no one had ever played. I mean, he just didn't believe that you should play to sports mm-hmm. I- at the Division One level. You should be year-round committed to your sport. And I had gone to Harvard knowing that the coach was a total supporter of people who could or wanted to try to play multiple sports. Do you agree with that? Or do you just, yeah, I mean, you were the coach. I think it depends on the sport in a way. In this situation. I think that if I had played varsity soccer all fall in the off season, I would arrive to lacrosse season in better shape than every single person in the team. Right. Um, and so those two sports, you know, that, that is a compliment. It, it yeah. prepares you. Totally. Whereas if you, I don't know, if you played magically, if, let's say football season was in the spring and then in the fall you were doing fencing or something, like you're not getting the weightlifting that you need to prepare right. for the right, football right, season. Right, right. So who knows? Totally. But, uh, you know, this was a very <laughs> tumultuous moment in my life. I hated lacrosse and i finally quit the team after our first game of my sophomore year and then walked on the soccer coach was like great come play so i played soccer my sophomore year crazy junior year uh i went abroad in the fall didn't did not play anything in the spring and then in the summer heading into my senior year they got rid of the lacrosse coach wow so you just didn't like that guy i really didn't like him and he, I mean, he got hired away by Maryland, uh, where he's flourished and won at least one national championship. That's crazy. Um, and I think he's a good coach. I just like didn't really blend with his personality. He was very intense, and I didn't really care that much mm-hmm. and wanted to have fun. And so, mm-hmm. but then they brought back the assistant coach that had recruited me under the original wow. regime. And he asked me to come back and play. So I went back and played lacrosse That's my senior year. That's ridiculous. How have we never <laughs> gone there? It's so complicated that when people ask me if I played sports in college, I just say that I played lacrosse because I played my lacrosse my yeah. freshman, two-thirds of my sophomore year, and all of my senior year. Mm-hmm. And then there was a little soccer mixed in there. Uh, and it's so hard to explain all of that that I just don't want to get into it. But that's... Totally kind of the full story and um why did i bring this up (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) all right this ends with when i was on the soccer team there was a guy on the team his name was brian and he wasn't very nice he wasn't very nice to anyone soccer team yeah he was a grouch grouchy guy and he was a senior he was a good player uh and everyone kind of knew they were going to receive shit from him and it's just the way it was but he was one of the leaders of the team and so you kind of had to deal with it and we were in the locker room in this it was the off season but we had game you know we had games and uh scrimmages and captain's practice and all that and we drove down and played columbia at columbia and we were in the locker room getting dressed before the game and i still remember I was joking around. I don't even know what I was saying. And then this guy, Brian, goes, you know the only reason that we let you on this team is because you're tall. Because I was, like, tall for the, very tall for the soccer team. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I know. I'm just trying my best. (laughs) And you could almost hear the wind get sucked out of his venom. Oh, nice. instantly yeah. he was like well i didn't mean that i mean you're a very good athlete too and then unfortunately someone else went oh he does have a heart which <laughs> instantly stopped him and reversed him he was like i can't be seen to be being oh, sympathetic oh. and then he was like no fuck that i stand by original point like we just we were playing because you're tall and we need to know how to defend headers <laughs> Some bullshit like that. And I was like, no, we should have let him, we should have let him wallow in his shame and guilt to show that he did have a soul and to get him more in touch with that. You saw the eye of the storm. Don't don't stop people from apologizing. Yeah. yeah, You know, make them fucking feel it because that's a feeling they should be familiar with. 
Dude, this is one of your best moves, man. Like you even do it to troll. To I do it to trolls, trolls, but I'm so disinge. I'm so lying when I do it to trolls. You're right. That it's like whereas with that one, I felt right. I could I couldn't have put the steps together quickly enough to say, if I fold here, he'll feel bad and I'll win him over. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it was just like, yeah, I know I'm not the best on the team and I know I'm not great, but I'm happy to be here basically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's just stopped someone in their track. Totally. Dude. So it's in, interesting. You, you bring that up in. So I've watched now we did our little Academy reward reward. She's Academy award preview. I've now watched two of the three that I had not seen. One of them being drive my car. Yeah. The Japanese one, which is really good, dude. Oh, I know it's slow. It's slow. That's like there's no I doubt, talk. but dude, it's good. And there's a there's an element of what you're talking about where it's like there's an obvious reaction to something in life. Somebody does something bad to you, right? There's an obvious reaction. The character in the movie does not take the obvious reaction, and it's really interesting to watch mm. what he chooses to do, and it's pretty crazy. Yeah, and especially if you like literature or theater. It really kind of ties in nicely with that kind of stuff, mm. and it's real. I really, I to me, besides Coda, it's the best. And then I watch Licorice Pizza too, which I would say is probably my third favorite. I wouldn't put it on the same level as those two, but cool. It was fun. Cool. Yeah. Okay. All that's, right. That's the update. I'll do some work. We got some work to do. Um, <laughs> some fucking homework. And Belfast, I'll take your word for it. You should watch it. I'm going to, um, but I'm worried that by the time we record. It, the Academy Awards will have happened already. I couldn't tell you within I believe the March 28th. a month when the Academy Awards are happening. I th right, the 28th of March? Can we check? Um, Sounds about right. Did you ever feel burnt out from sports while you were in college? Hunt, all, all, all the time. The, the, 20th, only March time 27th. I, the only time I didn't feel that way was when I was playing soccer. Okay. So you felt burnt out from lacrosse. Lacrosse was so much. Mm -hmm. It was so much. All the time, mm -hmm. hours and hours of your day. Yeah. As a student at Harvard, uh, I don't yeah, mean to yeah, be yeah. a douche, but we had a lot of fucking hard homework. Totally. Totally. And, you know, we'd have to spend four to five hours a day mm -hmm. over the river at the athletic facility. You know, an hour and a half to two hours of watching film. Jesus. Oh, fucking analyzing why you know a slide on defense was you know came from the wrong part of the creek whatever like stuff and they're doing film basically for the whole team and yeah. a lot of it i'm not even on the field i'm like what am i yeah okay yeah you know and then uh individual sessions where in the ivy league is just like super restrictive about the amount of practices that you can do interesting but they get around it teams do uh by doing these things called like individual sessions where in the off season uh you can have i think it's like three individual sessions a week where it's with one coach it's either the head coach or the assistant or one of the assistants and they can have six players and it's working on skills and stuff and the coaches make it take advantage of all of this mm -hmm. so you're you're with your coaches for like an hour and a half two hour individual sessions three times a week we can lift and condition unlimited uh -huh. as long as the coaches aren't running those sessions. We had our own strength and conditioning coach. Mm -hmm. So that was a loophole. And we would be, we would do sprints and fucking throwing up wind sprints mm. in the mornings at six, six to 8 a.m. Did you have one of those like little quarter track things in the gym? Like, not even, a, it's almost like a, it's like 50 or 75 yards in either direction. We um, almost whatever. always ran on the field yeah. i mean they they had plenty of things sadistic so but would you do those in the middle of the winter they they we got very we were, i was very lucky in that like the year before i got to school they put a bubble oh my God, over harvard God. stadium thank in the God. winter thank god and so we would condition in there but i mean you're still i mean you're puking yeah and you, like i i remember my buddy andy one time we did these we had these things called separators which are basically suicides where it's like you run to the five back to the end zone by the goal line 10 back to the goal line, 15, 20, 25 back to the goal line. You have to complete it under 34 seconds. Jesus. And then you have until the next minute starts to recover. Oh, no. And you have to do 10 in a row. Oh, my God. What? So you have 26, That's if you, you have 26 wow. seconds of rest. It's crazy, dude. And then you go again. And in order to pass this conditioning test, 
Jesus. You had to get eight the eight in a row. Uh, and but you still, even if you got all eight, you still had to run the remaining two. And if you didn't pass <laughs> in the fall, you had to keep coming down in the mornings and running it until you pass every day. Yeah. Oh my god. So wait, how long did it take you to pass? I mean, this was another reason why I didn't like the coach. The first, by the time we ran our official one, like we would run, we would train for this. where they'd have us Got run it. like four Got it. or five. Mm -hmm. And then we would have the test, the conditioning test at the end of the, the fall or whatever, as well as our strength testing where we would do max outs and all that bullshit and, and run our 40 yard dash, get our vertical jump, all that. It's like combine testing. Mm -hmm. But the conditioning test was the thing that everyone lost sleep over. Because it was just so it was shitty. So hard. Yeah. And I had my buddy, my buddy Andy pissed himself. He was so, the, the test was so hard that he lost control over his ability to like oh, not wow. go to the bathroom. I've heard of that. And pissed his shorts. That's crazy. But this was one of the, I mean, the coach didn't like that I had one day after like a captain's practice someone was kicking us up in an adjacent field someone was kicking a soccer ball around and i like our practice was over and i ran over and just started kicking around with him and they like didn't like that who mm -hmm. the hell knows why but they you know i wasn't focused enough whatever and so when we ran the conditioning test i got all eight mm -hmm. and i was well under oh. and he said that i didn't cross the line in time and had to come. That's fucked up. The next day, but I mean, everyone on the team knew I was just being punished because the next day I passed, and anyone who hadn't passed needed to keep working yeah. for a while yeah. until they got it. And like, why not just punish you for playing soccer instead of pretending that you didn't? That's like super annoying. It was mind games. Well, that was the thing. Yeah. He, he played sort of these psycho enacted psychological warfare. Right. Yeah. Um, seems pretty unnecessary which is why ultimately i was like at, when we played duke my sophomore year we beat them That's which was our biggest win in in years against i mean i think they were ranked like one or two at the time that's in crazy the country. They had, so were you guys like top 20 program or whatever yeah we we were that's sick my senior year we finished i think 13th in the country jesus that's crazy we should have been better though we kind of Kind of under, honestly underperformed. That's I had no, I didn't realize that they were that good. Well, the Ivy League is very good at lacrosse. Yeah, I have no. Yale I, won the national championship. I literally know, I literally know nothing about lacrosse. And, I know that the Ivy, and I, I've never like by any means written the Ivy League off. Like as far as sports, I know that there are things that they're very good. at. They were always very good at tennis. I mean, Harvard was like top thirty most of the time that I was in school. So I knew that I know that you guys have good sports. But it, but it I makes just sense. don't know about lacrosse. It makes sense because. Like those, the you mean Ivy those League kind of sports has restrictions uh, based on academic, right? Shit, you have to be a decent student even if you're an athlete to get in, mm -hmm. and uh, these prep school sports, tennis, lacrosse, mm -hmm. you there's a big enough pool of, you know, rich kids basically. But that's I that's to, to select from that you you don't have to you right. can you can that to me seems like the more important component i mean like if you are like a solid student but you're not like harvard level but you're an incredible whatever like you have a chance of getting in more so right? correct it but, helps. but like so the question that i then have are there, are there a lot of cases where people are able to like circumvent the kind of like uh scholarship process where like there's a way to basically give them a scholarship without giving them a scholarship no there are no right. i didn't think there so. are no athletics scholarships at, at any of the Ivies, and it's in, and there's it's like there's no exceptions to that rule, and there's no cutting, there's no like under the table bullshit, except for that. So that's that's why I wanted to ask because then that makes sense. Whole scandal, but that wasn't even a scholarship thing. That was just uh, getting them in. Oh right, right, right. So dude, but yeah, like the, and that makes total sense because it's like you're a really good tennis player. Not a surprise that like you know your family has money. And they're like, listen, like you're not going to be top fifty in the world. You might as well get to go to Harvard. That can maybe push the push you over the line. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not saying they're not a good student. I'm sure they're also very good students or whatever. Because you can't be stupid to go there. Obviously. Right. It's it. The point is, it's like you know, fucking tennis players and lacrosse players and you know, swimmers crew are more likely to have private SAT tutors than football players. Mm -hmm. 
And that's why, and, 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 you know, therefore schools that like, uh, that don't have such difficult academic restrictions, uh, on their recruiting, like, uh, I don't know. Wherever. I don't mean to be a dick. The University of Albany, let's say, mm -hmm. who has a very, very good lacrosse team. Really? Yeah. Um, they the, they're not benefiting. Uh, they're not distancing themselves by not having those academic restrictions in lacrosse, the way that, let's say, you know, Ole Miss can recruit football players who don't have great SAT scores. Right, right, right. Whereas Harvard just can't. And that's why... But they're not even... The, but for football, they're not in the same league, right? That's my point. They yeah, can't yeah. even... They can't, they can't even, even be D1A. Right. Yeah. They're, they, they're just like, we're not... They simply can't compete. We can't get the, the Michael Ors of the world. I don't want to use him. I mean, whatever. You get the idea. Like, you know, they can't get, you know... Yeah, they no, just they it. can't get totally. the best at recruits. Totally, totally. And it's also that there's no scholarships for them. But mm -hmm. all the scholarships of the Ivy League are based on need. So if you were an athlete who had no money, uh, you could apply for a scholarship and you would get you would get money, regardless of the fact that you were an athlete or not. Okay. In fact, right, I right. think I think the scholarship applications are blind. I think in some ways they like they they don't look at they look simply at like you're okay you got in to the school this is what your family makes in income and if it's below a certain number you get a full scholarship. Oh, interesting. It's cool. Yeah. Anyway, well dude, my so my my tennis experience like I after high school, I think I just like had a girlfriend and I was so psyched about having a girlfriend that like I kind of stopped caring about tennis for a little bit. I showed up to practice so, and then our coach, we were between coaches. So I like didn't really train much going into our spring season. I showed up to, I probably gained from when I started or from like the summer before I went to college from when tennis started in the spring, 40 pounds. <laughs> oh my God. I showed up my career high weight. Besides the at one point during the pandemic, I actually was able to top it, <laughs> which was dark. That was a dark. I moment. also love that you your career is ongoing. <laughs> like my, uh, career, is my ongoing. career high weight and match to the pandemic. It's like, <laughs> what career are we talking about? Career of weight. Yeah. <laughs> um. So anyway, fat like for tennis standards, and you know, showed up to practice. Like I got whooped by some fucking guy. Like. I just wasn't ready. So it essentially took me, oh, it took me a while too to get to like the conditioning that I was in senior year of high school, which is like sad to look back on, but whatever. And I remember one point, like junior year, I felt a little burnt out and I was like, I would much rather just like smoke weed with hot chicks dude, than go to practice. Like yeah. that was sort of my shit at that point, just smoking weed with hot chicks. <laughs> so <laughs> that's all I wanted to do. Um, and I didn't then, know many hot chicks that smoked weed, dude. I know, but they're you know they were there at our school. You know, there's some hot chicks. The, the weed chicks have gotten hotter they, over the they years. Have, they have as weed has become less stigmatized. <laughs> it's true. The hotter chicks <laughs> taken have up. taken it up. <laughs> it's like where chicks. were you when I was getting stoned with all the sixes and fives? <laughs> Um, dude, a hundred percent. That's hilarious. But so I remember the, the match, which like kicked me back into gear. So I like lost, I like lost a couple of challenge matches because you compete against each other in tennis as well to decide who's going to be wearing the lineup that sort of bummed me out a little bit. And then, uh, I played some guy and I forget if I was on my journey back already, but he like made some comment at the end of the match about like the fact that I played well in the first set, but couldn't keep my level up because I was fat. Essentially, you said that or like, inferred it in much simpler, dumber t terms. Direct, language. but he said I may have said something rude to him too. College tennis is very unpleasant. Uh, I may have started this. I forget specifically what can, I had said. Can I can I interrupt you for one second? Sure. Ever since you told me that in college tennis, the fact that you self referee, <laughs> Dude, it's fucked up, leads to the most blatant and flagrant cheating. Yeah. I now love watching clips of oh, yeah, people in college tennis cheating just making the worst calls like Ever. Balls, 
two feet in that they're calling out and then the opponent losing his mind. Dude, it's so unpleasant. And yeah. everybody on the sidelines be like, are you fucking... Like, dude, yeah. it's just brutal. Yeah. So, like, there'll be a roaming referee. And I think it, like... The top events, you know what I mean? If you're in the NCAA championship, I'm pretty sure they have like a chair umpire who mm -hmm. can overrule you or whatever. I've watched some of it on TV. Whatever. So this guy made some comment to me and it like hurt my feelings like a lot. And from there, it kind of motivated me to like get in shape. So then by the, la the last six months of my college tennis career, I was like match in match shape. Mm. And it's like, but it bums me out to this day that I've just, for some reason, wasn't able to be focused enough to have that all four years. But. It just was what it was. You know, it doesn't matter. Let's put it this way, Julio. Let's say that you had been at the best shape of your life and maintained a total focus on your tennis all through college. What would that have done differently yeah, for your that's, life? That's a good point. Nothing. Literally you know, do nothing. you do you really think that you would gain a lot of uh, relief or happiness or pride from looking back? frequently in saying i left it all on the court i gave my all you know so sometimes okay so I'll, I'll tell you i can answer this i can actually answer be this. you and harvard we didn't we didn't well i mean play you guys pro. you guys were top 20 in the no but i you know i'm saying like we didn't make any money from I know, it I know. we didn't win national championships is there money to be made playing professional lacrosse by the way if I, there I, was could you potentially have been in the mix for that it sounds like you know it's one of those things where like I, I probably have a similar answer to you where if I had really tried and I hadn't quit my sophomore year, uh, I probably could have made a team yeah, mm -hmm. in the MLO. Cool. Um, but I don't know for sure. Well, I don't know that my answer is the same as that because no matter how hard I tried, I don't know that I could have monetized tennis. However, um, there is something uh, valuable about knowing that you are capable of giving it your all. And occasionally I'll be like, is this a trend in my life where I'm just not capable of giving things my all, which is not the case, but like the, it, and on bad days or days where I like can't focus, it haunts me a little bit, mm. you know, I get that. I get that. You extrapolate the times you gave up as a, as a trend, as a personality right. trait. It's like when the dust has settled, well, I just look back and be like, I could have given it more in general. Dude, I'll never forget that uh one time one of my closest friends to this day um you know i had i had i was it was when we were early in new york and i worked for that tutoring agency and then quit to start my own tutoring kind of you know was just like working on my own as a tutor and so i i was living with him and i told him that i had quit the agency and then was doing comedy but was like ah, i don't think this is going anywhere after a year and a half two years whatever and he was like i'm not gonna do comedy more i'm gonna go to law school studied for the lsat got the job at the paralegal mm -hmm. withdrew from you know quit my job as the paralegal and then withdrew from law school and then um had another tutoring gig with a with one family where i was working with them for you know i don't know a year and ultimately that ended and fell apart. And he said something to me like, you know, offhand, it was like the seventh or eighth time I had to tell him like, yeah, that's over. <laughs> you know, oh, right, right, a right. professional thing right. was over. And, you're like, and, oh. he w and I think he said something like, I don't, I don't know how you're ever going to hold a job. Or like, you quit a lot. You quit every job. And he was kind of kidding, but it haunted mm, me. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, it be almost. I worried if it was this self fulfilling prophecy of like, will will I ever hold any job? Mm. And the truth was, I hadn't found the right job yet mm -hmm. because as soon as I, you know, redoubled my efforts in comedy, I did stand up unbroken for years, mm -hmm. and then had bar soul for two and a half years which you know i didn't quit yeah, right yeah and then we've had this podcast yeah. for three and a half years and really? i've been doing two and a two half. half and i've been doing stand-up like, since law school for yeah. whatever eight yeah. years this it's just you you fail yourself or the world fails you out of the things that you're not supposed to be doing and you winnow and towards what you're meant to do totally unless 
you have a family and you can no longer afford to seek the thing that makes you happy right, or right. you know or you have like you that. have ex, extra circumstances right. That force you to like suck up a job that you hate and not quit or yeah. get fired. Um, and remember, you know, there's no like the the an important thing to to talk about here. I think is in both of our cases, whatever omens we thought were present were bullshit. Didn't matter. Didn't affect anything. And you can really let that kind of thinking derail. That it's easy to derail yourself with that. Mm. And I'm glad we kind of stuck with it. You know, we're resilient. But I've seen people quit things because they thought that they couldn't, but they just weren't trying at all. Yeah. You know, and yeah. you really can get pretty far. And I got to be honest, comedy has really, has really opened my eyes to it because there's a lot of people who I have watched eat shit on stage for not even kidding a decade, be terrible at comedy for a decade and then turn the corner eventually. Yeah. And other people who were more talented and better at it just didn't keep trying. Dude, it's it's that but then but the problem is there's also you know and i don't know how many other jobs are like this where there are a lot of people in comedy who aren't trying and are still in it and they're not doing well but there's no one to fire them right 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 there's no one to be like dude you gotta stop right like you're not good and you're not getting better and it's because you don't get it and you're not trying Mm -hmm. And you think that this is just a matter of time mm -hmm. spent and that somehow once you hit your 10 years, you're going to get some kind of all access pass to, to the world of comedy. Right, and the right. reality is you're just, you're not changing your jokes. You're not writing new jokes. You're not listening to your sets. You're not networking, whatever it is, you know, right, right. the approach barnacles is, yeah, on dude. the hull of the comics table at the various clubs around New York city. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Strap Barn hangers. Barnacles. They're strap hangers. <laughs> Comedy barnacles. Yeah. Hanging on. Um, should we do an email? Oh, yeah. And then hit the old, hit the old road. Um, That's the Julio email sound. <laughs> the, is it really? Is, you know, every time you read an email, the tongue comes a knocking. That is funny. Um, okay. <laughs> Um, By the way, one other thing I've noticed. What? I listened to the clip of us laughing at oh, the funny. cat, the pretty kidder. <laughs> pretty litter. Uh, pretty litter read. Yeah. When you're laughing really hard, mm -hmm. you go, that is insane. <laughs> Which I love. It's like your tell. When you when you find something really funny, that's funny. you say that's insane. <laughs> That is, dude, you've said that to me before. It's, I've never, it's really good. Not, I've never even noticed it's that. It's really good. That's yeah. great. I love it. Um, okay, this one I thought that we would like and that you guys would enjoy as well. Um, it's called School Scandal-ish Story. Hey, guys, love the pod. Always my favorite part of Tuesdays and Thursdays. I was, yeah. was DMing with Julio about this story back when I was in, back when I was, oh, from back when I was in high school and got in some trouble. He asked if I could shoot it over in an email. See below. Have a funny high school story. Not sure I would call it a scandal. Uh, I was a relatively good kid through high school. Uh, definitely a smart ass, but didn't get in a ton of trouble until the end of my senior year when I got suspended uh, for a week and almost got arrested. Backstory. I was super into the show The Office at the time. I was thinking about the episode where Jim was writing Dwight uh, faxes from his cell, himself in the future, messing with him. So a kid I was friendly with but never spent time with out of school left his email up in the school library, and I thought it would be funny to send him a message from himself. <laughs> it was something along the lines of like, on some random day, uh, the school is going to get sucked into a black hole. <laughs> and signed it off from his future self. <laughs> yeah. Which in hindsight wasn't the best idea. Got a laugh out of sending it. Didn't think anything of it at the time or for the rest of the weekend. Uh, that next Monday, I got pulled out of one of my classes and the police were waiting for me. <laughs> The kid's mom saw the email. What, what police? The space police? <laughs> Who's monitoring that kind of a threat? <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, but not insane. Dude, the, no, <laughs> the kid's mom saw the email and thought it was a terror threat. 
even though it was from her own kid to himself and reported it like a bomb threat. Oh, my God. (laughs) I had to go to the police station and they did not find my joke amusing. The county prosecutor was going to charge me with terroristic threats against the public, but ended up getting the charges dropped. Dude, what kind of morons work in your town, dude? That's that's kind of type of shit annoys me so much. Um, they suspended me for a week and took some convincing to let me go to prom. Ended up letting me uh, go because they felt bad for my date. Fast forward to the week. <laughs> Fast forward to the week. Uh, I was suspended and kids in my grade thought the situation was so funny that they were tweeting at our school principal's account, mocking them for how they handled it and making memes about it. Good. Mm. I uh, woke up one morning to the principal calling me and accusing me of organizing what he called an online revolt against him. Wow. Jesus. <laughs> Meanwhile, the parents of the kid whose email uh, it w- were accusing me of hacking their family email address and going, dude, where do you, where are you from, dude? Is this th- baseless claim? This poor guy. Like, like I hope, I hope to God that he left his town one day. and was like, Oh my God, there's, there's things beyond this. Like, yeah. Seemed like they regretted reporting the whole thing and were this just trying the to justify where it. The movie Footloose was originally based. <laughs> <laughs> there was no hard feelings between the kid whose email it was and me. He felt bad that he got me in trouble, but it ended up being a story uh, that I still tell today. So Wow, that's crazy. Okay, so can you pull it back up? Yeah. Did um Did you say that he said he sent an email along the lines of... The school's going to get sucked into a black hole? It sounds as if that was what it, the email what was. What does he say? But he exactly. says along the lines of. Okay, so this is where this is where I have an issue. It's possible that he's not giving us the full thing. The specifics of the email he sent. Because that response sounds so far out of whack with the wording. You know, are the police really going to gonna push the case if it's if it's the school's getting sucked into a black hole my guess is that he had a few other things in there that were actually a little interesting a little rough interesting and you know that you don't fuck around with threats to schools in the same way that you don't say bomb in a airport security right you have to be extra sensitive Mm. in that realm and uh I'm I'm guessing not to discredit our our storyteller here. I'm guessing he's watering down the content of that email a little bit. Okay, I would love to see the email because my reaction was not that, but I want to see which which one of us are right because this is interesting to me. All that says is on some random day, like, "Hey, Jim, it's Jim," like writing you from the future. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, there maybe there was there was more to the email, but then eventually he's like. On June 21st, the school is going to get sucked into a black hole from which it will never return. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that, I I never thought what you just said, but now I'm very interested to hear. Do you see what I mean? I though? do see what like, you mean. I, I, you know, it's almost too ridiculous. If, it, if, it's, town... if it's, hey, Jim, it's Jim from the, like, you know, on this date, the school will get sucked into a black hole. No, I don't know people who aren't picking up the office reference to that. How is the principal allowing it to escalate? Exactly. Yeah. And how is he getting suspended? Right. And it's, how it's, is how are the police charging terrorist threats? I mean, right, right, come right, on. Right, 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 right. There's just no way. Totally. Like, I, I it had echoes to me of like big fish in a small pond syndrome. Like, even just some of the people from my town, like the things that people took seriously as an adult. I now I'm kind of just like, are you guys serious? Right. You know what I mean? Nothing like this, but even just the way that state troopers would behave or, or I don't know. So, but it, that, that was just tapping in in my own shit. So I'm curious, mm-hmm. dude, if you can find the actual email, we'd love to see what you said. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be very, I'd be very curious. Pretty fascinating. Um, um, cool. Nice man. Dude, take us, take us home. Everything good with you. Otherwise life is good for you. Yeah. Everything's good. Yeah. We're, we're really excited to tell you guys the story of the ping pong on the next episode. Oh, yeah. So make sure you tune into that. By the way, we had we had the lovely Raina Greenberg uh, last week, uh, and and you know our plan as of right now is to have guests here and there. Uh, it, you know we don't. If you have any, by the way, requests for someone that you'd love to hear on the pod, we're certainly open to hearing that. Shoot us a message, uh, you know, email or or DM to the main account. Um, but you know we're we're kind of just ch- testing that out. And so if you love the episodes without guests, don't worry. We're still going to do that most of the time. 
Uh, but but we it's fun to mix it up. So totally, that's the story. Uh, we're Oops the podcast, and I'm at Gotham Comedy Club April eighth and 9th, My big New York headlining weekend. Tickets are there aren't that many left. Uh, so please get tickets for that. I'd love to see you guys. Uh, FrancisEllis.com. Anything? Cool. Uh, yeah, d- uh, July twenty eighth. I'm gonna be in Seattle. I've actually been getting a lot of emails about when are you coming to Seattle, and everyone being like. We saw Rain and Ashley. We saw Francis. What's your problem? Yeah. And it's felt so good to just hit them back. With so the crazy to find out that Seattle has a hotbed of, of uh, Oops Podcast I love fans. It. I can't wait. I love Seattle, too. I cannot wait to go back. Hell yeah. Um, so I'll see you guys there. I have some other stuff, too, but uh, nothing too important at the moment. Cool. Uh, That's it. You all. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Oops Podcast. We'll see you on Thursday. Bye.